Meister Eckhart. Whatever the way that leads you most frequently to awareness of God, follow that way. And if another way appears, different from the first, and you quit the first and take the second, and the second works, it's all right. It would be nobler and better, however, to achieve rest and security through evenness, by which one might take God and enjoy him in any manner, in anything, and not have to delay and hunt around for your special way. That has been my joy. To this end, all kinds of activities may contribute, and any work may be a help. But if it does not, let it go. St. John of the Cross, all that the imagination can imagine and the reason conceive and understand in this life is not and cannot be a proximate means of union with God. We cannot talk about <clears throat> the goal because words are all lies in relation to. that state which we know of as possible. What we can share tonight, as we shared in this tabernacle some months back, and we'll share in the next few weeks, our means or methods. Primarily, they turn out to be methods of purification. Most of us have experienced getting our heads through the door, doorway into the kingdom of heaven, but our bodies just won't fit. Some of us got our hearts into heaven, but our minds wouldn't fit. There is a lovely saying, do not, do not make friends with an elephant keeper unless you have room in your home to entertain an elephant. But unfortunately, what brings you here is that you and I have all made friends with an elephant keeper. We already have this huge elephant in our living room, and now we are into the care and feeding of elephants, whether we like it or not. There is something awesomely irreversible about the journey we are sharing. Evolution just doesn't seem to go backwards. And the evolution of consciousness and the waking up in this very lifetime is what seems to be what we are about. How many lifetimes each of us have been through to bring us to this point? For many of us, 
we haven't yet caught up where we, to where we were last time. And so there is something vaguely familiar about everything that's going down. It's not quite deja vu, although many of us have experienced that. But it feels like an unfolding of a flower that you have seen in bloom before. But what happened the last time for all of us by definition of the fact that we are here on this plane at this moment sharing psychic space at this vibrational rate is that we didn't finish. So here we are again. Remember last time? Same trip. Except we were all just a little bit less conscious. And as we meet here for the next 10,000 lifetimes, we will each note that we get a little more conscious till finally the hall is empty. Because we will all turn into butterflies, as the Tibetans suggest. Once the seed's been planted, once you know a possibility, once you understand that it wasn't at all the way you thought it was, then starts a long and complex undertaking of purification. Now the purification is intensified for you by what's called uh, tapasya or austerities. And austerities come in funny packages. What it really means is something abrasive, like sandpaper that tends to refine you. The image that I've been working with these past few weeks that is so meaningful to me, and to many of you, I'm sure, is the one of a stairway. You have been in a building or you're going into a subway and the rush hour is at five o'clock and at five o'clock thousands of people come down the stairway and you've decided to leave a little early to beat the rush. So it's around 10 minutes of five and you go running down this long, long, long stairway. Those of you that have been in New York subways know that long, long stairway. You get to the bottom and there is a sign that says, this exit closed. Use the exit across the street or use the stairway on the other side of the building. Now, what I usually do on these conditions is I look around to see if there's a way to slip by. And then I don't find one. And then you turn around and you start to walk the stairs and at that moment it's five o'clock. And now down the stairs comes a mass of humanity. And you're now on about the 20th step. And you say to the people, <laughs> now, if you were one of the people coming down the stairs, would you believe you? <laughs> You say to somebody, uh, and they look at you like you are insane. Now, you're in a funny predicament, okay? because you might do one of a few things. You might go back down to see if you read it wrong. I mean, there's a possibility that you just imagine it, because all these people can't all be going in the wrong direction. But you know, 
You saw the sign. You read it. You trust your senses. You saw the sign, and it said, this exit doesn't lead out. And because you know that, all you can do is sort of stand there. You can't go backwards down the steps because that's obviously absurd. But yet the wave of humanity is such that you can just barely stay there and maybe move a step. And every now and then you catch somebody's eye and they look at you quizzically and you say, the sign says, and they hear you. They say, oh yeah? Because you look honest. Now, but you see, the strength of their commitment is different than yours, because you saw the sign. All they did was hear your report of the sign. See, that's pretty abrasive. It's pretty abrasive because so many people are telling you you're wrong. You go to a university, go to a nice middle-class university, not a, another kind. And everybody is coming down those stairs, going for the degree going for the achievement, for the success, for the external payoff. You already saw that sign. It says, this exit is closed. Sorry, this one doesn't lead to where you thought you were going. people who have, who are achieving in life economically in order to gain security, in order to feel that feeling. And you've seen the sign and you know that when they get it all, it's not going to be enough. How do you say to somebody, how do you say to a 50-year-old man who has spent 30 years building a business, building security, all on the basis of the Protestant ethic of work now, enjoy later, how do you say to him, uh, it's not going to be what you thought later? Do you think he gets any solace from the smiling ads of senior citizen communities? We'll all have fun together as kids again, because we've finished the trip successfully. We all have our boat on our trailer on the back of our camper. Our children are in college, our insurance is paid up, and now, now comes the fun. You think it's enough fun? Recently I was camping in a state park, which during the week is like a mobile senior citizen community. And dozens of people kept going by me and saying, oh, you come from New Hampshire. Oh, you're a long way from home. felt as poignant to me as it felt some years back when I was playing gin rummy on a yacht off the Florida coast with one of my father's wealthier friends for a penny a point. And he was building all new factories in the south. And I said, why are you building all these new factories? You're in your 70s, you've made millions of dollars. 
And he said, what else am I going to do? It's the difference between my mother saying to me when I was a child coming home from school, not what's happening to you inside of you learning something, but what did the teacher say about you? How are you doing? How are you doing externally? Are you making it? Are you making it? You got a pretty chick? You got green energy? Got it made, got it cooled out? Is it enough? The rushing headlong down the stairs, and it's only on the 20th step of 150 steps. See, you're only the 20th step from the bottom. We're getting very near the bottom as a culture with our super affluence and our and television and freeways. We're getting right to the point where we're getting all the stuff that the book said if you did your thing you get. Social security, guaranteed minu- minimum Guaranteed annual wage. Turn on a tube in your home and bring in Frank Sinatra and Jackie Gleason on Saturday night. Smothers brothers in the old days. Get in a high powered box and move anywhere else you want so that the whole society is hugely mobile. Find a beach you can swim naked at. Find people you can make love to pretty much when you want to now. You imagine somebody in the 1890s in Freud's hometown. I mean, you know, had Freud lived that way, the whole second chakra description that he's laid down for us, he wouldn't have bothered because there wouldn't be anybody stuck at the second chakra. We're just about getting to the point where everybody is getting enough of what they thought they wanted. And then comes the horror show. Then comes the tranquilizers, the sleepless nights, the kind of desperate, desperate grasping. Give me another kiss. Love me some more. What's happened to our family? We don't stay together enough. And the new car sits in the garage and the speedboat sits on the rack. Television sets turned off and the new ranch house cooks the coffee and makes the eggs and does the toast and does the washing and the husband and wife sit encased in a plastic horror a horror that they wanted that's the horror of it oh but it's very easy to scapegoat them The problem is that them is us. See, oh, maybe it's not a plastic ranch house. Maybe it's a groovy pad with Indian hangings, candles and incense, groovy clothes, high-vis clothes. Saturday nights at the Fillmore and the family dog. Lots of time, drifting around, really good grass. I mean, really good. 
<laughs> so that you can just reach from the hookah for the hookah from your bed in the morning. <laughs> I mean, you've got it beat. Groovy hi-fi. No, earphones in bed next to your, what, amyl nitrate or whatever. <laughs> Lots of good friends to hang out with. <coughs> Movie books to collect more stuff. Mm. Pretty far out films showing up. Infinite number of places you can get high in. The ocean, Camel Pines. The park, the apartment, bed, bathtub, parachuting, scuba diving. When is it enough? When have you collected enough experiences? Want some more? <laughs> Lifetimes. No rush. Maybe a few more experiences will do it. Do what? Not get you high. We all know how to get high. I mean, everybody here at least must know how to get high. We all get high off something or other. Everybody has their trip. Did you ever hang out around surfers? I mean, surfers really get high. You get on top of that wave, you've got to turn off your head to get on top of a wave like that, to really ride it. Transcendent experience, me and this huge amount of energy. Perfect harmony to this energy. Wow, is that addicting. Man, surfing's the way. It's all I want to do for the rest of my life is surf. Or maybe you're trip six. If you think surfing's good. <laughs> there's that moment when there's only four arms and four legs and two bodies and one consciousness. And at that moment, that's what it is about. It's enough. It's the place. It's, yeah. Oh, here again. Whew. You don't say it at that moment. You don't sit around saying, ah, oh, I'm here again. <laughs> but afterwards you say, oh yeah, that was it. That was it. Oh, you all know that place, probably by now. Most of you. Maybe your trip is science. I mean, you get on through solving problems. You just won the Nobel Prize. Oh, oh, God. Whew. Oh, does that feel good? Oh, I wish it would last forever. Now, what are your plans for the future? Don't dally in ecstatic bliss, the instructions say. <laughs> Ecstasy bliss is just another astral trip. What's your trip? Art, music, or oh, music. Really go out on music. Music's the way. Man, you don't play music? Wow, you're really missing something.
Every one of those methods, including pranayama and hatha yoga and prayer in church and scuba diving and motorcycling, it all does it for somebody or other. It takes everybody to here and now. We all know how to get high some way or other. So now we don't have to spend time lecturing and discussing how to get high. Now the other question gets more interesting. Why do you come down? See, it isn't getting high anymore, it's being high. I mean, I don't want to get high where there's a low. I would like to be. Be. Just be here now, always. In the eternal present. It's that place, it's that place. It's what all those things lead to. The problem for most of us, and of course I've left out one of the major methods of getting high in our, my little list here, is of course drugs, chemicals, altering states of consciousness chemicals, psychedelics. They get you high. But almost every one of these things I've mentioned has what's known as an absolute refractory period. It doesn't give you a constant state of high. It makes you live like a roller coaster. Up and down. And up and down. And it's only when the downs are as high as the ups that you've started to beat the system. Up until then, all you are is hooked on your upaya. You're hooked on your method of getting high. Sex, drugs, pranayama, hatha yoga, scuba diving, solving problems, driving motorcycle, walking in the park, music. The distinction is that every one of these things Every one of these uses of the senses or the thinking mind to transcend the senses and the thinking mind works, but it always, because you have used the senses and the thinking mind, keeps you in time and space and only lets you out for a moment. And every one of these things, just like the thorough enjoyment of the Divine Mother, the total honoring of this exquisite being that is called nature, that includes all of this, all of this, the honoring, loving, and worshiping of it, is only really possible when you are free of attachment to it. When you need your method to get high, it will never be enough. It'll be enough for a moment, but it won't be enough. See, most of, or a good number of people, have pretty well cooled out their lives at this point. They have to work a few hours a week. They've got enough bread, enough food. Good scene. They have the scene they visualized. They've got a good, good old lady or old man. Maybe kids, some dogs, maybe a goat for milk. Good food. I mean, there are people that are living exquisitely Exquisitely, they don't appear in House Beautiful, but they appear in, uh, in uh, like the Oracle section on communes.
the new house beautiful. Or the ex new house beautiful. But the problem for most people that are gathered here at this moment is that all of their habits of thought or models about how they'd like it to be does not bring them to exactly the same place that there is some place inside of them that tells them is the way it is.